Hey all, it's Lawrence from Lawrence Creates, and today we're going to be starting a new tutorial, um, and we're going to be creating a game engine. Now, uh, my last game engine uh, stream uh, sort of ended up getting more popular than I thought it would, um, and a lot of people don't actually realize that that stream was actually me coming back to programming after six months, and it was me just sort of figuring out what I still could remember. Um, so it's not really a well-written guide. If you follow along, then sure, you'll probably get the same results as I did. Um, but basically, I'm going to be creating a actual tutorial to make a game engine. Now, in this game engine, we're not going to be using the, uh, basically, the, the, the Windows library for drawing graphics. We're going to be using something called Sphere Sharp. Now, Skia is basically Google's graphics library, um, and it, it also supports OpenGL. Now, it's super easy to set up OpenGL with Skia, um, and it doesn't really require that much coding. So I thought, before we jump right into the deep end with OpenGL, let's make sort of a, a basic 2D engine um, using Skia, because it still has OpenGL support, and everything is... I mean, basically going to be as good as setting up an entire OpenGL project. Only downside, of course, is we won't be able to do any 3D with Skia. It is simply going to be a 2D engine. Um, so this will probably be a three or four part tutorial. Um, and we're going to basically be going over the exact same stuff as my last engine, except we're going to be using uh, Skia. So the first thing we want to do um, is create a .NET 6.0 project and this is the console project that is sort of supported by Linux, Windows and Mac and a, a few other platforms I believe. Uh, I'll have a screenshot on, on, on now for you guys to see what, uh, what, what settings uh, and console uh, I'm talking about. Um, so once this is created we actually want to do a few things. Um, so if we right click and we basically want to go open folder in File Explorer now we want to edit the uh, CSPROJ. If we, I'm just going to use uh, Notepad++, but I'm going to copy and paste a few things. Now it's some simple stuff, but basically we add a tag that says use Windows form. We set that to true. And then just at the target framework, we're going to basically have a minus Windows. Now if we save that, we can close out of that. And now if we right click our solution and rebuild solution, we should see that we uh, should be able to access our system.windows.forms now, which we can, great. All right, so now we actually need to go to our, our tools, our NuGet packages and our packages solution. We go browse and we're gonna browse for Skia Sharp. Now we want the Skia Sharp package, and I'm downloading the latest version, which at the time is 2.88.6. And we also want the Skia Sharp views. Again, that's the same version. Alrighty. So just like last time, we're gonna create a new, uh, new folder. Add folder. This is gonna be called Create2D. And then we're going to uh, add a class and we're going to call this create to the engine add. Okay, um, so we want to be using a couple of things. The first one being Skia Sharp, of course. Next, we want to be using at Skia Sharp dot views dot desktop. And lastly, we want to include uh, system.threading. All right, so uh, the first thing we want is a SKGL control, and we're going to call this GL controller. Now, this is the controller for our Windows form that basically is run by OpenGL. And we're going to create a, we're going to set it like that. Um, so GL controller equals new SKGL controller. Next, we want a new form. And this is uh, 
basically going to what do we want to call this? Yeah, we'll call it window. And that's going to be equal to a new form. Then we want to go and create a new initializer function for this script. Um we're also going to change this. We're going to say public abstract class, just like last time. Um, and this is going to have an int for, an, for the x and an int for the y and string for the name. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is sort of set the window size. Uh, so we're going to say window dot size. Uh, is equal to new size x and y. We also want to set the title, so that's just window.text equal to the name. Uh, then we want to do the same for the GL controller, so GL controller dot size. We're going to set the size to the window dot size. And after that, we want to add the controller, so we might actually do that before we scale it. So so window dot controls dot add and we want to add the GL controller and basically just gonna say application dot run window. Okay, so if we go to our program here, we're gonna delete all of this. We're just gonna say new create 2D engine dot create 2D and that is our engine here. And that is going to be the one. Uh, sorry, we'll say 512, 512. And the name, I'm just going to say demo game. Okay. Um, I can now create an interface. Oh, yes. Oh, we want to do it like this, I believe. Uh, so we want to say base and put that there. And we'll do it like that. And if we just remove it like that, we should get it. Uh, what am I missing here? Uh, Put, let me see what the error was here. I didn't completely read it. Uh, so, I cannot create an instance of the abstract type or base. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, basically, we're going to rename, we're going to create a new class. Sorry, I completely missed this step. Uh, and this class is going to be our demo game. Now, the demo game, uh, we're just going to see using uh, engine uh, is going to inherit the right, engine. And this is going to want us to implement a whole bunch of stuff. So let's do that. We're also going to make this a public, not a channel. Also, this is in the wrong place. We don't want it in the create 2D folder. We want it outside of that. Gonna let me move it. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So that's adjusted the namespaces. Uh, we probably don't even need the namespace going to do that and this is now going to using the engine dot create 2d and we we're going to set this by public and this I don't know why it's not referencing after the fact but you need to do it like that, I suppose. And then we're just going to generate our constructor here. And this we don't need. 
and we're gonna say 512 this will create as the demo game okay so now we can go back to our program here and we just say new demo game and see did we make this a yep okay that should be it so we should get our window to launch now and okay so it's black because we have the GL controller and that is basically without us needing to do much work is letting us use OpenGL um, and that's this little black square here is where we're going to be adding uh, basically anything we want to draw. Now we are going to change it so that it scales with the form. So in the create 2d engine we're going to be adding a couple of events the first one being the window dot resize event if you say plus equals and then press tab it will insert that function automatically for you and in here all we're going to say is gl controller dot size <coughs> sorry excuse me uh, is equal to the window dot size so if we launch that now you'll see that when i resize the form it actually resizes the OpenGL container as well. Now we actually want a um, well, an event on the GL controller, callback rather, and that's going to be a paint surface. And again, if you say plus equals, oops, plus equals, and then tab, that's going to insert uh, the function for us. But I'm going to rename it to renderer. Okay, so. Uh, by default, this doesn't actually refresh. Uh, it's very similar to what we did before. Uh, it only refreshes when it needs to. So just like last time, we're going to create a new thread that will basically force this to refresh. Only difference being is we actually don't need to call another. We basically don't need to invoke the main thread thread to do that. Um, we can actually call most of Skia's stuff on other threads as well. Um, so if we just create a new void, um, I'm just going to call it the looper. It's probably a better technical name for it, um, but we're just going to say thread um, looper equals new thread. And we're just going to be calling looper. And we say looper.start. And then inside of here, we want to say while true uh, GL controller dot invalidate. Now, last time we had to say thread dot sleep, and we had to give this a value. That's because for the basic Windows renderer, uh, we basically were calling it too fast for it to do anything. But because we're using OpenGL, we actually don't need to do that. Um, and it'll be fine. So we can run the window, and although nothing's going to change, this uh, the OpenGL uh, part is basically refreshing as fast as your hardware can handle it. So next, we are going to add some color. So if we just say e dot uh, dot surface dot canvas, and I believe it's clear, uh, then we can say sk colors pass and that allows us to use a hex code so i didn't have a hex code prepared but let's just have a random one there so if we launch the window now that should have whatever color that is there we go that very disgusting blue um so that's all working and we can say e dot surface dot canvas dot draw and let's draw a circle and first is going to be the SK point. Now, later down the line, all of these SK points and stuff, we're going to be making our own vector two class, um, just so that it's sort of easier to understand what everything is. There's a lot of different things with Skia, and all of them honestly can just be condensed into a vector two class. Um, so I don't know why this autocorrect would paint, but it has to be point. Um, and uh, sorry, I think I know why. We want to say new SK point. 
And this is basically the position on the screen. So we're just going to 50 by 50. Next is the radius, we'll say 50. And then next is the paint function. Uh, this is a little bit convoluted, but you basically say new SK paint. And this allows us to add uh, a couple of things. Um, so we're going to have a little squiggly brackets there, and we're going to say color. Uh, is equal to, should be able to say SK color. Not, is it doing a color that lets us uh, do that? We just say equals. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then we say SK color for pass. And then we'll do another hex code here. And I think if we just do zeros, that's white. Correct me if I'm wrong. But if we play that, we should now have a white circle. No, we have a black circle. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, the triple F, was that white? I can't remember my hex. There it is. Okay. Triple F is white. So now you can see we have a circle. And we can basically rescale the window. It's always going to stay in that little part. And just to sort of test out some movement, we're just going to create a new um, float. Be this. Uh, use a float? Yeah, okay, that's a float. Um, so uh, we're just going to say ex for test x. I'm going to equal. Do we need this outside of the renderer to really test it? Outside of here. We're just going to equal it to zero, and then inside of here we'll say tx uh, plus plus. Actually, realistically, we want to be like 0 0.1f, something like that. And if we say tx, uh, that should move 0.1 uh, every frame, basically. Yeah, there it is. And we can speed it up, maybe a 0.5. Yeah. Right. Okay, um, so that's basically all I wanted to do for the first uh, video. Um, basically, just showing how we can set up Skia and get it to run. Now, in the next couple of videos, we're going to be setting up our Sprite 2D class, getting images displayed, um, allowing to create for squares, circles, all of that. Um, so that'll be in the next video, um, as well as just sort of cleaning up these classes with some uh, classes of our own, creating Vector 2 stuff like that. Um, and lastly, I, I have a, I've basically never done anything like this, but I will be releasing this project onto a private GitHub repository that I will be giving access to people with our, uh, basically our, um, our mid-tier Patreon um, tier. Uh, so anyone who's on that tier will get the invited to the, uh, the GitHub repository. Um, and if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can just follow along with the videos because there is going to be no change in code between the GitHub repository and what I add in videos. Um, but with that said, if you guys liked, uh, this video, please give it a like. If you want to sort of stay tuned for the next one, um, uh, subscribe it would be wonderful. And yeah, uh, I look forward to the next video. Thank you guys. And I'll see you in the next one.